Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Today we're back at the workstation here doing a bit more MIPS programming. Today we're going to take a look at slot reading and a bit of batch reading and writing. We can do all them from the IC10 chip now, so let's get stuck into it. So we'll start with slot reading. Now what is a slot? Now a slot is just an extra component or a subcomponent of devices so such as your sorter here it'll have an import sl slot which controls all the properties of what you've put in and a couple of output slots which just keep track of all the things that have come out it is handled separately to the actual machine itself because each of them can have their own set of properties now the slots are a little bit harder to read that's why they need a special command if you look at them just with our device configuration we can see the, the uh, properties of the device itself, but the sl slots don't show up on there. So if you want to have a look at the slot, there's a couple of ways we can do it. So this thing is no good to us. So we can hook up a slot reader. Now a slot reader can just be hooked up to your sorter, and from that we can read the slots on it. So we see we have our export slots and import slots and the data disk. So our import, they each have their own set of properties to it. Your quantities, damage, class, quantities, prefab hash, occupied. Of course, now you can see them quite easily from your stationopedia. So we have the sorter here. And it does tell us that it has an input slot, exports, two export slots, and your data disk. The slots are numbered 0, 1, 2, and 3. Those numbers are important because you have to reference those by number you cannot reference them by name so once we're in the editor here we can find with our function look up there we find the, the load slot so just ls is the command we'll need to a destination where we want to load the information which will be a register then we want to say what device is coming from then we'll need to tell it what slot so that's where the slot number comes into play because it does have to be a number you cannot use the, the word of an input slot or an output slot. So take note of the numbers there and then what property you're trying to load from that slot. So we'll pop a little example and we'll use that one there. So here is our code. I have alias the sorter to D0. I have put a display on D3 just to help us with the display. The first thing we do is set our sorter into mode 2. Mode 2 is for when we're using the IC10 to control it. So it'll hold items until we tell it what to do with it. Now the main loop of the, pro, of the program. So what we're doing is loading from the slot into our destination, which is at register 0, from the sorter, slot 0, and the quantity of items that are in there. Now the, the, uh, the slot value there as 0, it can sometimes be difficult in reading the code. So what I like to do with them there is just to define a constant for it. So if we define input slot as zero, now I can copy, paste that in there. So now it just makes a bit more sense for me. If I'm going to be using a lot, lot of these ones here through the code, I just like to be able to do that sort of thing there just to make it a bit more easier to read. But that's just personal preference. You don't have to uh, and then we just save that, save that value out to the display and back to the start again. So if I export that, uh, it tells us zero because there's nothing in there. But now if I drop something in there, um, say cables, it now tells us we've got 48 of them in there. So that is working for us. So it is reading from the slot. So it is very similar to reading from any other device. That's just that we need to put the slot number in there. Now we have changed the property on the, on the input slot to the occupant hash. It's no longer the quantity, it's the occupant hash. So that'll give us the hash value of whatever's in there. At the moment we've got the cable coils in there and that is their occupant hash. So from there we're going to query it. If R0 is equal to the cable coil hash, set R0 to 1 or 0 if it's not. And from there we just save the output which will tell us which output to send it to, whether it's the front or rear output, according to whether R0 is 1 or 0. 
and we'll just display that value on the display. Um, so that should work for sorting cables out from everything else. If we confirm, we export that, and it has spat the cable out the back rear slot. Now if we do it again, it comes out the rear. So sorting the cables to the rear. Put something else in there, it gets spat out the front. Something else, also out the front. And it can always just pick the pick the cables to the rear. So that is a basic sorting algorithm using the slots on the sorter. So that is slot reading. Once again, there is no slot writing. They are all read only. Now that brings us to batch reading and writing. Now batch reading and writing is just a, a, a new ability that the IC10 has. And that is uh, what the old batch writer chip used to do. It can write to multiple items of the same type all at the same time. So even though we've got six pins on here, we will still be able to write to hundreds of devices, provided they're all the same. Now with batch writing, the obvious one that we're going to go for is a heap of solar panels. That's probably the first thing everyone thinks of, but it can be done to any device. You could batch write a heap of lights to all come on at the same time. You could batch write a heap of uh, hydroponics units. You could have hundreds of hydroponics units all controlled by the one IC unit just by batch writing to them all. But the trick with it is all of them will have to operate the same way at the same time. So if you wanted a heap of uh, hydroponics to all harvest different things at different times, that's not going to work. So the batch writer will do send a command to all the connected devices at the same time. So how do we do that? All right, if we go into, into there, we have, once again, on our functions guide there, we have our load batch, LB. So it will load from all the, all the connect, all everything connected. So you want to load into your destination, your variable. Now the type, it wants to know what type of device you've got connected. Because we don't have them connected directly to any of the IC pins, you can't just address it via a pin. So we have to address it via its hashtag. So if we look in our station of PD, we can find we have our list of solar panels. So if we look up solar, we've got a solar panel here. We find that our prefab hash is there. Now that is for a solar panel. But note, as I say, it will only talk to things which are all exactly the same. So the solar panel with a single outlet is different to the solar panel with the dual connections there once again is different to the heavy solar panel. So I say it will talk to all devices connected but only ones which are exactly the same. All right, and the save batch command is done the same way. SB, LB and SB. So this is a save, save the value to all connected devices of the same hash type. So it is save the destination which is our hash value we give it, the variable we want to save, and what we what what value we want to give it. So here's our command. We've just got a single line of command here. We haven't got it in a, in a loop, so we're just writing a single command to it. That'll be the end of our code. So we want to save batch to our hash value, which is the solar panel with the single connector. We want to change the vertical setting to 10. So once I write that, even though they're not connected to any pins on the, on the chip, it should broadcast out to all connected devices matching that hashtag, and they should all set their vertical to 10. So if I confirm that, say export, both of them connected, move down there. Now we'll find that if we change it to the other type of solar panels, one there, and I'll put back the single connector on that one there, find a run, run the command again, export it, we find only one of them moves. That's because the other one has a different ha hash prefab hash on it, so it, uh, it does not respond to that command. Even though it's a solar panel, it is a different device. Now, if you want both types of solar panels to uh, 
respond to this. It's just simply a matter of repeating the command with the new hash value there. So our prefab hash on the dual port solar panel is here. So we just re repeat the command with that one as the new, the new hash value. Confirm that, export it, and they both connect. I've got them both in different orientations here, so 10 means different on both of them. But they're both responding now. If either of them are not connected, it will not throw an error. So you can also add in extra lines of code for your heavy solar panels, and if they're not connected, it won't matter. It'll just broadcast out to everything. So now if we hook up our solar sensor, and we just connect that to pin D0, we can write a very simple solar tracking program. And here's the code for a basic double axis solar tracking. That's all it is. So we've just attached our sensor to D0. Now I've defined some constants here. Instead of trying to remember what all the hashtags mean in there, I've just defined a, a constant called a solar single is that which is the hash value for the solar sing the single axis solar single single input solar panel and this double input solar panel is that one there so it's just a bit easier to read the code now from the start we just load the vertical angle from the sensor into r0 if you remember the maths from doing this before we need to subtract that from 75 so r0 equals 75 minus the value from r0 before then we divide it by 1.5. So R0 now equals old R0 divided by 1.5. And we save that with the batch into everything which has a single single port solar panel. We save the vertical code to R0. And once again, we just want to load from the sense of the horizontal angle. Now we don't have to do anything with that horizontal angle. We can just feed it straight back into the solar panel. So we once again save batch the horizontal angle to zero. So that one will just save for single axis solar panels. Once again, if we wanted to do both types of solar panels, just a matter of repeating that line. Repeating U, V, and changing that one. Once again, repeating U, and changing it to there. So now that one will just repeat the repeat it to both those ones there. If only one or either of either or neither of those ones are attached, there won't be any errors with it. So we confirm that. We export it. And both our solar panels are now doing dual axis solar tracking. It should give us 100% solar tracking from one solar panel or from one solar sensor, one chip. And that will control hundreds of solar panels on that one. Everything that's connected, that will just run them all. Now the load batch command works in pretty much the same type of way. So LB is our load batch. So we have to put a destination where we want to get the answer that we're trying to load, which will be a register. Type 1 should be our, our hash for the device we want to read from. Once again, they must all be identical. The variable we want to read from the device and the mode normally when we're reading a batch we've got to give it a mode such as your minimum your maximum average sum now these ones you can actually use a number in there or you can use the word so now i've hooked up a heap of wall lights attached to our circuit here they're not attached to any of the pins they're just attached to the same circuit as the ic housing now we've aliased our display to the pin D3 because that's where I've currently got it connected up to. We're going to use that as part of our, our demonstration here. Now to find the wall light, so the hash prefab hash code for that one there is up there, just to make it easy to read. So it is the wall light and exactly those wall lights, not any other type of light. So we load batch, our destination, which is R0, so just general purpose uh, register we're using the hashtag which we've defined as wall light the value on and the sum that's the method so we want to add up all the lights that are switched on and then we'll just save that value to the display setting so it'll count the number of lights which are switched on and show that on the setting and then just back to the start confirm 
export that there are no lights on switch one on there's one on there's two on and so on now if we switch on one which is different it does not count it so none of these are attached to the IC housing IC housing is just broadcasting a request how many of these lights are switched on that correspond to that prefab hash so only those ones will respond to it so it's four five and off again once again none of the others will respond to that because they are a different prefab hash and they will not be counted i have used it to query the batteries there to get whatever the, the percentage is of their charge and that'll display it on there so it can be handy because then it doesn't matter how many batteries are connected you can have 50 or 100 batteries connected and they will all respond to the same command there that is the basics of slot reading and batch reading and writing that's how they're done use them how you wish make sure you use them for good and not for evil or use them for evil if you get the opportunity <laughs> i would <laughs> but that's just me until next time happy building see ya